Today we will be doing the Regent of June 2012. And I'll walk through each one with you. A good thing to do first is to work them out yourself and then check with mine to make sure you have them. When they ask for the product, notice that the terms are the same. What's different is the sign in the middle. These are your perfect squares. So perfect squares, the middle terms will cancel. So we just need to multiply our first term and our last term. When you multiply your fractions, multiply the numerators, multiply the denominators, and x times x, x squared. Your positive times your negative gives you a negative. Again, for your fraction, multiply your numerators times your denominators, and y squared times y squared, y to the fourth. So you come up with choice one. In the second one, we're talking about the domain. The domain deals with your x values. Your range deals with your y values. Remember, these are in alphabetical order, and these are in alphabetical order. So x for domain, y for the range. A good idea to do is to box this thing in. Just box it in by its endpoint. All the x values are here. All the y values are here. You want the domain. You want it from negative 1 to positive 6. And if you've got a negative 1, positive 6 in 1 and 3, notice 3 and 1 and 2. Notice 3 and 4, use the range. And in 1 and 2, 1 used an x, 1 used a y. You want the x value. And you want to make sure, because your endpoints are closed, that you use the equal sign as well. In number three, you're looking for a solution set. If you're totally confused, you can put your calculator in degree mode. Make sure your mode is in degrees. And then plug each angle in for one of these and see that they equal zero. You're going to notice that either your 30s are going to work or your 60s are going to work. In this case, your 60s are going to work. But if we work them out, we're going to solve our equation just like you would any other equation with this being your variable. We add 1, and then we divide by 2. Now, because this is trig, we have one more step. We now have to find the angle. Cosine is positive in 1 and 4. Remember, all students take chemistry. So cosine is positive here and here. This is x over r, 1 over 2. So therefore, your reference angle is 60. So from here to here, it's 60 degrees. From here around to this terminal side, it's 300 degrees. So you're looking at choice 4. But remember, you can put it in your calculator and plug it in there. Number four, we see this one quite a bit. Here's a cube. Again, like in other regions, I've written out the perfect cubes. Write out the perfect cubes if you need to. Or try 64. This is your perfect cube. You separate your cubes the same way you would perfect squares. So 64 is a perfect cube. Three does not go into 16. So we just wrap it down to 15, and what's left over is the A1. Now we can resolve our perfect cubes. This will give me 4, A, 3 goes into 15 5 times, and I'm left with my cube root of A, which is your choice 3. Once you realize you have a leftover, get rid of the one that it can't possibly be. This combination, this one was a little trickier. What I would do for this one is work them out. Start with each one. Start with your 5. Plug your 5 in. You come back around. You're going to add the next one, 6. Well, well, that's not working. Then you come down here. Plug in your 1. 
3 times 1 is 2, plus 3 is 5. Next time you add 2, 2 times 2 is 4, plus 3 is 7. So, so far this one looks good. We check again. Eight times, 4 times 2 is 8, minus 3, 5. We go to 5. 5 times 2, 10 minus 3, 7. Well, that's a possibility as well. Let's check number 4. 3 times 3 is 9, minus 4 is 5. Check the next one, 4. 4 times 3 is 12, minus 4 is 8. Whoop, that was not working. Now, it's a choice between 2 and 3. Check the last terms. So if I plug a 20 in here, because it's going to check, it's going to do 20 before it checks 20. 2 times 20 plus 3. There's my 43. And that's what I wanted it to end at. When I check this one, 2 times 24 minus 3. This is 48 minus 3. This is 45. So my answer is 2. In number 6, they ask for an angle in standard position. Standard position angles always start here, and if it's positive, opens counterclockwise. If it's negative, this, is, this would be a positive one up here. If it's negative, it will open counterclockwise. It will, oh, sorry, it will open clockwise down as well. So your positive is counterclockwise, your negative is clockwise. So since they want a negative, we're looking for an angle that goes this way. And that would be this one right here, choice four. Sometimes they throw a nice one in at you. Okay, here's a log. In most of these, we've been, we've been seeing that they use your log rule. You have a power rule, which brings the exponent up. Always bring your exponent up first, even if it's a, a fraction, that's a radical, but bring your exponents up first. Do what's in your parentheses. When you added your exponents, you were multiplying their like bases. So let's start with this one, just leave this one in place, and change this guy to a multiply. So we're going to come out with a multiply out of this. We're going to get t squared times r to the one-half. Now, r to the one-half is a square root. So you're going to get t squared square root of r. Now, your minus sign, when you were subtracting your exponents, you divided. So now pull out your log b, and you're dividing this. And since they set this equal to log b of x, once you have your sides down to one term, one term, you can then cancel out the log. You can only do that when it's one term, one term. So x is equal to what's left over here, which would then be your choice four. Number eight is a nice sum and product. Remember your formulas. The sum is equal to negative b over a, and the product is equal to c over a. So for each one, you're going to pull out your information. And you're going to work your sum and product. Be careful of your negative sign. This sum will become negative 9 over 4. Whoops, not what you want. This sum will also become negative 9 over 4 not what you want. So let's go to these guys. A is 4, B is negative 9, and C is positive 3. We get our sum now at a negative of a negative becomes positive, and our product here is 3 over 4. So this is the one that we want. Remember these two formulas. Put them on your formula sheet. They don't give them to you, but they appear in almost every region. 
Number nine has another inequality. Seems like we've seen these before. This is an absolute value. Two ways. Make sure you're, we can solve this algebraically, or we can check it with your graph. So let's solve it algebraically, and then we'll check. Make sure your absolute value is isolated, which it is. An or statement that goes this way. So we can get rid of your and statements. We don't want your and. Your ors make a positive. One positive, and then one negative. There's your or statement. Take it out, and when you set it to the negative one, switch the sign. And then you can solve both of these. When you solve both, cross them up and get, multiply both sides by a three, get rid of your denominator, and solve. This one's not so bad. X will be less than one half. Same thing, multiply both sides by three, and solve this one, x is greater than two. And then you can come and determine that it was choice three. Now, if you check this without solving this, notice the difference between here and here. One includes a zero, one does not. So I would try this with zero. Try this with zero and see if it's true or not. This becomes negative 5 thirds, and it is positive, so this is true. So we do want the one with the zero in it.